our knee program here today. We're going to start off, uh, we're going to be standing today for the entire session. So we're on our feet. I've got a chair for support here. We're going to get into standing hip extension. So if you recall, last week we took that leg out to the side. Standing hip abduction. Now we're going to get into extension, so driving our foot back. All right. So I'm going to use the, the chair here. With our setup, we're trying to, again, keep this upright spine and take our leg straight back. Now, you're going to notice as I keep pushing my leg back, my foot starts to rotate a little bit. All right. So what's happening is my hip is rotating into external rotation. That is, again, our strong position. Externally rotated joints are typically going to be the strong, stable position. So as I take this foot straight back, my hip automatically wants to rotate into external rotation. This is, again, one of those exercises where we don't need a ton of range of motion. We don't need to take this leg and crank it back as far as we can. All right? Yes, I'm going to feel some of that glute, but I'm also recruiting all sorts of other muscles, which isn't what we're trying to do here. We want to focus our, our strength and our, our, our center focus is going to be into that glute so that we can ultimately stabilize the knee here. Another exercise, completing both sides is going to be more beneficial as yes, I am working the side that I'm kicking back, but I'm also creating some tension on the opposite side because there is a form of balance here with this exercise. All right. The other thing that you want to keep in mind when completing this exercise, there's no need for you to hinge at the hip at all. Okay. We want our hips to stay stable, our spine to stay nice and upright, and we're just pushing straight back. Go ahead and complete 15 repetitions on this one right from the get-go. The next one we're going to get into is going to be a little bit more dynamic. And you can use this exercise with the mini bands or without them. It's going to benefit you either way, especially if you are doing it correctly. But it, so what we're going to get into is our, is our side steps. All right? So our side steps are basically going to be taking our, side st or our standing hip abduction and putting it into motion here. All right? So I'm going to start with, you know, standing nice and upright. My core is braced. I'm just going to put both hands on my hips. From here, I'm going to reach and step. Reach and step. Reach and step. All right? Now, of course, when we go one way, we have to come back the other way. All right? So we're going to complete the same number of repetitions on one side versus the other is what you can do is exactly what I'm doing here. Maybe you take three to five steps one way, and then you go ahead and come back the opposite way. The one thing that we don't want to see is a slide of the back foot. All right, we do want to see you lift the back foot and bring it in, especially when you do start using a band around your knees or your ankles. So once you do add a band to make it a little tougher around your ankles or knees, your back foot is going to want to slide, all right? But do not allow that foot to slide. The other thing you want to keep in mind is going directly out to the side. So if you find yourself taking your steps and ending up a little bit closer towards this camera here, or towards another object, then you obviously know that you're stepping forward. So if you need to set yourself up with a line directly out in front of you, whether it be a piece of tape, um, a seam in the floor, a carpet, a piece of carpet, go directly out to the side. The last one that we're going to get into is going to be a squat. So we're going to use the wall. It's going to allow us to take a little bit of pressure off of the knees, but also allowing to create some strength and stability. So I'm going to use the wall here. I'm going to walk my feet out. All right. From here, I'm going to try and slide myself down the wall, keeping my knees from caving in. All right. So again, if your knees are caving in as you perform this exercise, 
going to point towards some weakness. You're going to really need to focus on those hip abductions and the sideline clams, those exercises to complete that strength and to stop the caving in from happening. But as what I'm doing is I'm sliding myself down the wall here. All right? I'm taking some pressure off of the knees because I've got the wall from behind to support. If you feel pain in your knees as you do this exercise, first and foremost, don't go down so far that you do feel that pain. So if you can only get to here with zero pain, that's okay. Just trying to progress each and every week. All right? So working a little bit lower each and every week or each and every repetition. The other thing you can do is you can walk your feet out a little bit. All right? So walking the feet out a little bit is just going to take some of the pressure away from the knee so that I am not getting into this superior or this full flexion and my knees driving forward, which is what I would normally complete on a typical squat. All right, so when you're on the wall, go ahead and start with 10 repetitions and try and progress into 15 as you get stronger and stronger. That will wrap up our fourth and final phase of this knee program. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can reach out to us directly. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, our website. Happy to answer any questions that you might have.